what's going on with everybody thank you for tapping in with me again today and if you're new to the channel my name is cleveland so welcome to the fish corner happy fourth of july everybody good morning hope everybody have some plans today some fun in the sun some barbecue some water activities whatever you plan on doing just be safe while you do it but uh before we get into all of that let's talk about what we got going on in this video so i want to do an update on my 150 gallon salt water i want to do an update on my 150 gallon flower horn aquarium before we get into all that, can we just acknowledge how, how dope this thing looks? It's just plywood right now, but can you imagine when we see this nice, big viewing panel right here and we see the fish swimming around up in here? This is like going to be perfect. This is perfect right here. But anyway, just had to acknowledge that. I mean, when I'm doing my recording and I just see in the background this big monstrosity, in a good way, this big monstrous tall plywood aquarium, have to acknowledge that you can't just just overlook that so if you don't know and you're new here this is right here this is a plywood build i got going on plywood aquarium this is going to be 1200 gallons it's a little over it's a little over six feet tall in here but um the water level will definitely not be to the top more like five foot so it'd probably be about like like right here anyway um this is my very first ever plywood build and uh got some work to do in there you know so I still need to do another wrap of plywood all around it, bottom sides, add some bracing, things like that. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll get up in there and I'll start fiberglassing all the seams. And, you know, then we're going to do some pine shield into it. You know, then we're going to do some pine shield and then we'll put the glass in and all that. But anyway, that's that's a future video. In this video, we're talking about this 150 gallon flower horn aquarium. So most people think that flower horns can't go with other fish or they don't put flower horns with other fish now this guy is really aggressive he's very let's take a look at him while we talk about him all right so this is drax our flower horn and uh like i said he's actually really aggressive but believe it or not he's living peacefully with a bunch of dovi feste fry this being the biggest of of the 10 this is actually the biggest dovi feste fry i have so i put all of these fish together months ago months ago and uh, they've been living happily but like i said he is definitely aggressive and i have to watch when i think about putting any other fish in here he's not tolerating any fish of his size in his aquarium at all so even though a fish like an aggressive sickly like this flower horn will live with some small fish some people don't even think they will live with small fish but as you can see we have about 10 of these dovi feste frying here and i didn't put him in at this size obviously they were nowhere near this size but since i put them in here they've grown substantially especially this one right here and there's literally no issues at all he never tries to go after them i mean they're coexisting splendidly so i'm happy about that but since we've had him you know he's done some uh, some damage to some fish and you know he's actually killed a fish or two um but you know that's to be expected when you have a very aggressive fish and uh that's not something that happened over time i mean that's something that happened overnight so you know just be cautious but i did want to show you that you can keep them with some other fish ranging in sizes which is kind of crazy like i said he don't really want to have any kind of competition so i think the reason why this works is because he is clearly you know top dog in the aquarium so basically since there's no competition with these little fry right here he don't feel the need to be overly aggressive and try to go after them. Now, I don't know what's going to happen when these fish get a little bit bigger. The goal for me is to move all of these fish out of this 150 and possibly move them into the 225. That would be ideal. So that's what I'm working on. And the reason being is because we have, you know, 10 of these, you know, Dovi Feste Fry that we do want to have grow out in. You know, they can't really all grow out in a 150 gallon aquarium. And, you know, in reality, they can't really grow out all in a 225. But, you know, that's a bit bigger, 75 gallons bigger. So that's the plan for that. But uh, this guy is such a pleasure to keep, despite the fact that 
you know, behind my mistakes in the beginning, you know, he, he took down a couple of fish. What really just took down one fish uh, that I really cared about. And, uh, you know, that really, I ain't going to say it hurt, but it did kind of hurt a little bit. But it is what it is. I can't do nothing about it. can't change it. And I'm still very happy to have this fish because he's beautiful. And um, now that I have him in a situation or a setting or a tank, however you want to say it, uh, now that I have him in this aquarium where he's happy and able to grow and thrive, he's definitely been growing and thriving. So let's go ahead and feed Drax. And then we'll take a look at what it takes to actually keep this, uh, keep this guy happy. So I've been feeding him Hikari pellets. I have some of these Hikari floating sticks and he loves them. Matter of fact, all the fish in here loves them. There we go. So as you can see, they love their food. It used to be that when I pulled out the camera, they get all shy and and not want to eat, but I'm glad that they got over that, probably because I've been recording them a lot more. Really, Aida's been recording them a lot more on TFC with me. So if you don't know what TFC with me is, type that into your YouTube, type that into your TikTok, follow me, follow her over there on TFC with me. I'll also put the links down below in the description. But yeah, give her a follow on TFC with me. She does the behind the scenes stuff, show all the things that I don't get to show, show the thing, show a lot of things before I even show them. So if you want to get you know, uh, uh, if you want to get ahead of, of some of my videos, that's a little bit slower because I actually, you know, have to record and, and edit a lot of these videos. You could definitely follow her, on, follow her over on TFC with me. You know, it's all still supporting the family, so it ain't like it's separate. So, yeah, go give it a follow. Check out the links in the description. Follow her on all platforms. Well, follow us on all platforms, should I say, because it's all one unit. Nonetheless, let's get back to this aquarium. So this thing is being filtered by with two sponge filters right there that you see back there. We also have a nice little aerator right there. It's more like a, a air diffuser. It's much better. That means that you're going to get a lot more oxygen than, than just a typical air stone. We also have a big above the tank sump right there. Now that's massive. That is a massive above the tank sump right there and uh that's what i'm using that's what i'm using to filter this aquarium the thing i like about this sump right here is that i could use this same sump the same system this whole one system to assist me with doing water changes i could close off that valve open another valve i need to put one right there because the other one i can't access anymore because this guy right here anyway so i'll put one right there that's very easy and then I could close that one open that one and the water will drain down and I'll drain the aquarium all the way to where the pump is so that's awesome that makes water changes real real easy so let me grab my ladder so I can climb up there and show you what the inside of that sump look like do-it-yourself sumps can be very effective and efficient if you know what you're doing. I've been building these things for quite some time now, so I know what I'm doing. Now the first thing you'll notice, so all the water goes into this big basket where I have all this filter floss, right? And then it escapes here, and then it hits all of this media. Now I have a ton of different kind of media in here. I have, I have lava rock, I have ceramic uh, blocks, Biomax, I have sponges, pot scrubbers. I mean, I have a little bit of everything in here. And that's why, again, I love the sumps because I could go I don't want to say crazy with it, but I could do what I want with this sump. I could put anything in here. It's just such an amazing sump to have. So I'm really happy with this. I'm, I'm, man, like if you have any 
questions on it. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Water comes in right here. It hits. You see that, that pipe, that PVC? It goes to the middle basket where I have all the filter floss, even have another perimeter filter floss. And I mean, the water in here is crystal clear. So, you know, it's doing its job. I could actually change some of that out if I want to, but as you can see, it's still very white. I still got an extended period of time on this. So that's how I go about filtering this aquarium. That's how we, that's how we filter this aquarium. That's how it's being ran. Eventually, I'll take out all these rocks and, you know, or maybe I'll leave it like that and just add some other fish in here. The fish that I probably will add in here is the fish that's down here in the 75 gallon. Probably move everybody up from the 75 gallon to the 150. Move everybody from the 150 to the 225. Hence, everybody gets an upgrade. So we'll see how that works out. I'm kind of nervous about moving, you know, our flower horn with the Oscar. But look at him. But we'll see. I'll make sure that I make sure that if and when I do decide to do that, that I do that with y'all. Just so y'all can see firsthand how it goes. Ain't no telling. I know moving the Oscar into this aquarium, it wasn't a good idea. Drax was relentless. You wouldn't even think that they're the same size. So I think it might be a better chance moving all of these fish into there. Just because the, the Oscar isn't as aggressive as the flower horn in some instances. And uh, in this instance, with these two particular fish, the flower Drax is definitely more aggressive than, uh, than our Oscar fish. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. It's looking a little, um, like I said, like you see all the little debris and all that because I was messing around in the filter, moving it around and all that. As you know, when you do that, you kind of like push a lot of stuff into your aquarium. But yeah, Drax is a very happy flower horn. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Just a quick one, just a little highlight on our 150 gallon flower horn aquarium. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comment section. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're inspired by something. And if you were and you're new here, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Follow along. You might want to see this build that's right here behind me. Anyway, everybody, enjoy your fourth. Be safe. Stay cool. And uh, if y'all like the video, like the video. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Peace.